Hello everybody, uh, I'm Maureen Francis and welcome to A Word of Hope and Encouragement with Pastor Maureen. We're living in very difficult times. Times are hard to cope with, hard to bear, but the Word of God is full of hope and encouragement. And that's what I want to share with you in these podcasts. So the topic we're going to look at today is turning your wilderness into a pool of water. Please turn your Bibles with me to Isaiah chapter 41, and we're looking at verses 14 to 20 from the New King James Version. The poor and needy are seeking water when there is none. Their tongues are parched with thirst. I, the Lord, will answer them. I, the God of Israel, will not forsake them. I will open rivers in the bare heights and fountains in the midst of the valleys. I will make the wilderness a pool of water and the dry land springs of water. I will plant in the wilderness the cedar, the acacia, the myrtle, and the wild olive. I will set the cypress in the desert, the plane tree, and the pine tree together, that men may see and know and consider and understand together that the hand of the Lord has done this, that the Holy One of Israel has created it. Let's look at this passage from the Passion Translation. I, Yahweh, will respond to the cry of the poor and needy when they are thirsty and their tongues are parched with thirst, when they seek a drink of water, but there is none. I, the God of Israel, will not abandon them. I will open up refreshing streams on the barren hills and the springing fountains in the valleys. I will make the desert a pleasant pool and the dry land springs of water. I will plant in the trees, treeless desert cedars and acacia, myrtle and olive trees. I will set in the wilderness evergreens together with many elm and cypress. Everyone will see and know that I, Yahweh, with my mighty hand, have done this. They will consider and comprehend that the Holy One of Israel has created it. What a beautiful passage of scripture. Let's go into the background of this passage. The children of Israel had fallen into idolatry and despite the warnings God had given to his prophets over many years, they failed to turn away from their sin and thus receive the judgment that was prophesied. You know, God oftentimes gives us all kinds of warnings that if we don't do the, the right thing, then there's a judgment, something's going to happen. That's what we, we see in the Bible. But God is long-suffering, and oftentimes he doesn't carry out those, those judgments straight away. He gives people plenty of time to repent, and that's what happened with the children of Israel. So over many, many years, he was giving them prophecies that they should turn away from their wicked ways, they should turn back to him. But the children of Israel, they just did not listen. And... You know, there comes a time with God that there's a cup of iniquity. And when that cup of iniquity is full, that's when judgments came. And that time came for the children of Israel. He removed uh, the Nebuchadnezzar, king of Babylon, invaded Jerusalem in 596 BC, leaving the land desolate. He removed all the treasures from the temple of the Lord and the royal palace and carried all the officers, the skilled workers, and the nobility away captive, leaving only the poorest people behind. The captivity lasted for 70 years. During this time, the Jews were in despair, feeling abandoned by God. However, God had not abandoned them. He sent them promises of restoration through his prophets, some of whom were also in captivity. And this passage is an example of this. Let's unpack these verses. Divine provision. These verses emphasize God's ability to ab provide abundantly for his people, even in the most desolate circumstances. Water, which is a critical necessity in the arid Near Eastern environment, symbolizes life and sustenance. The imagery of rivers, springs, and pools indicates God's miraculous provision. 
transformation of the land. The transformation of deserts and barren heights into fertile and lush landscapes symbolizes not only physical restoration, but also spiritual renewal. The mention of various trees, cedar, acacia, myrtle, olive, juniper, fir, and cypress underscores the completeness and diversity of this restoration. Isn't that wonderful? God's faithfulness and power. The passage reassures the exile community that God has not abandoned them. His intervention will be so evident that people will recognize it as the work of the Holy One of Israel. This reaffirms God's covenant relationship with his people and his power over creation. Isaiah 41, 17 to 20 is a message of hope and reassurance to the Jewish exiles in Babylon, promising that God will transform their plight and provide for their needs. This passage underscores themes of divine provision, transformation, and the demonstration of God's faithfulness and power. The imagery of life-giving water and the flourishing of diverse trees in the desert illustrates the renewal and restoration that God promises to his people. You know, this passage is also relevant to us and gives us hope and encouragement when we feel abandoned by God. You know, the children of Israel were abandoned or they felt abandoned by God. God turned his back, as it were, on them because of their sin and because he'd given them so many chances. And then the cup of iniquity, as we've talked about before, was full. But even though he turned his back on them, he had not completely abandoned them. He was going to give them a chance to come back to him again and be reconciled. And that's what we can learn. You know, there are times when we make mistakes and we rebel against God's commandments. Uh, sometimes people backslide, they go uh, the wrong way, they, they completely forsake the way that they were going before, they were serving the Lord, and then they turn their back and go in a different direction. But you know, God's hand is outstretched still. God is still reaching out. He will still reach out to us in the midst of difficult circumstances and even when we have done wrong even when we've sinned he will have mercy and pardon because he loves us and he wants to be back in the right relationship with us so that's an encouragement i want to encourage those of you who are in that kind of a situation where you've turned your back on god but god wants to bring you back again there are other reasons why people feel desolate it could be because of circumstances of life um, that have gone pear-shaped, leaving people feeling dry and parched. You know, there are some terrible circumstances that people go through. Sometimes it's a bereavement. You know, that can make you feel dry and parched. It can make you feel like you're in a wilderness. You've lost somebody that was very, very dear to you. It could be your mother, your father. It could be a spouse. It could be a sibling, a, a very dear friend. You know, something could happen that can really have a very devastating effect upon your life, making you feel in the wilderness. You don't know where you are. You know, your life has been completely devastated. But this passage is saying to us that if you happen to be in a situation like that, God can turn your wilderness into a pool of water. He can, re he can replenish you again because that, God is so good at doing wonderful things like that, turning things around. He's a God of restoration. Praise the holy name of the Lord. Glory be to God. And I want to say that, you know, even though the children of Israel went through that terrible time, 70 years in the wilderness, feeling so desolate, feeling so bad, badly, so abandoned by God, their land was turned into trash, as it were, and it it was in such a bad state. Do you know that the promise that God made them, that he would turn the wilderness into, into a pool of water, it came to pass. Many years later, Cyrus, king of Persia, became emperor and allowed the Jews to return to their land and rebuild it. And now the land of Israel is blossoming, just as God said. It's a miracle 
how that land is turned out. God has really given them some very creative ideas about how to turn a wilderness into a garden of Eden. And that's what I want to say to you again. We can be reassured that God will keep every promise that he makes to us. He's a God of wonderful promise keeping. He's a promise keeping God. And we can be assured that he will deliver on his promises. He wants to bless us. He wants to give us an imagery of good things happening. That's what he, he gave to the children of Israel here, that while they were in that captivity, he, he was telling them about the wonderful thing that they could look forward to. He was giving them an imagery of better times to come. And he wants to do that for each and every one of us. So I want to say to you that if you're going through a difficult time right now, better days are coming. Lift your head up. Look up. God is going to do something remarkable for you. He wants you to use your imagination and just to see yourself in better circumstances because it's going to come to pass. So God bless you. I hope that this was a blessing to you and uh, that you were encouraged by this. So I want to thank you so much for watching today. Um, and if you, uh, you are blessed by the program and you want to bless us, you, you're very welcome to do so. We'd be very happy, happy for your help. So please go to the end of the program and you will see all the information about how you can be a blessing, how you can go onto our web website and donate to the ministry. So God bless you and I'll see you next time.